What's up, what's up? It's time for Done Way Past Funny. With your host, G.D. Fenderson. Join us as we take a look back at the early works of seasoned comedians before they were seasoned with this week's guest, Brian T. Shirley. It's time to get down and get dope with Done Way Past Funny. Hi, I'm G.D. Fenderson, certified forensic humorist at large, but I'm losing weight. Thank you for joining us as we continue our interview with comedian, actor, writer, the original BTS, Brian T. Shirley. Enjoy. So I know you have to get out of here soon. Uh, is there anything out here that we didn't cover or discuss that you'd like to hit real quick? I think, especially if you're coming up in the business, you know, just know that uh, the lessons I've learned is keep money in your bank account. <laughs> Don't be ashamed to work you know, an odd job or whatever, but, and it took me a while to learn this. If you can do things and make money that are like on the fringes of entertainment, and then you're still entertaining, that's the key. Cause see, I, I learned to start doing demos. They call them brand ambassadors. Do you know what I'm talking about? I think so. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of these independent companies that hire people to do, um, wine tastings, beer tastings, right? food demos. Now, I'm not talking you working for the grocery store or working for Total Wine. I'm talking you're an independent contractor and you come in and you do these wine tastings for another company. You're not working for Jim Beam. You're working for the company booking you for Jim Beam. Right. See, I've been doing that too. And that's good pay. And it's two, three hours. See, that's the thing. If you're going to do this, if you're serious about being an entertainer or being a comedian, you got to learn how to make money quick not, when you're not doing comedy because your ass is going to be on that computer or you're going to have to be available to make decisions. I had to be available this today, no, yesterday, because I had a gig Monday in Myrtle Beach to do a headline of theater. I got an email. And uh, this was these two days, the last two days were my busy days at home. I don't have a day job. My day job is sitting at home, getting on the computer and work, getting work. So if I wasn't able to do that, I wouldn't be heading to Knoxville uh, to do a TV show because I had to cancel that gig in Myrtle Beach. And thank you to James from uh, the comedy shop who was kind enough to understand that um, this was an opportunity for me, but you got to be smart when you're coming into this business because that's the way it works. You want to break. It's not going to come at the best time. Yeah. You know, it just isn't, it's going to come where you're going to be scrambling and you should have seen me yesterday. I'm going, Oh crap. I had to figure out all this stuff. And today, what did I do? I spent uh, some time filling out all the paperwork for that stuff. That's a lot of paperwork <laughs> to get on a film set. Oh my gosh, it is. So I'm online doing all that today, you know, and uh, getting information for the hotel and everything. So yeah, just know that if, because everybody thinks, oh yeah, you're a comic, you're on stage 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Well, no, let me tell you something. This is, I'm on 24 hours a day and I'm off 24 hours a day. You understand what I mean? Yeah. I'm, I, I choose my own time, but that's why I'm somewhat successful because four o'clock in the morning, I wake up, roll over, and there's a lead on my phone from Gig Salad or something. Yeah. What am I going to do? I'm going to answer that lead. I'm going to run to the, here and look at my calendar and go, I'm open. <laughs> And answer the lead, man. That's what it takes. So you want to be a comedian? You better work your ass off. That's all I got to say. If you want to, you know, yeah. be successful at it. I try to, my, my motto is I try to be prepared. I try to be prepared for whatever the gig is. You know, it's like, because you don't, you don't know what's going to, you don't know what you're going to get and where you're going to get it. Right. And, 
Uh, and yeah. if you can work clean, if you can, you know, like tell, because like you're not a vulgar comic. You no, know, I'm, I can I, be. Not, yeah, I I'm not. I, would, I wouldn't call you like clean, clean. No. But you're not vulgar. But you, right. but you're, you've, you've. Um, but like I said, but you have to be clean to do the corporate stuff for the most yeah. part. I mean, you have to be clean to do the corporate stuff because they're trying to, they're trying to entertain without offending anybody, you know. But that's and, getting harder and harder. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like, I don't, I, I feel for you because I, I, I don't know if I could do a corporate, I'm, bu I'm about to do my first corporate gig in a couple of weeks. I've you never done one before. You want a big secret on that? Are you doing it by yourself? No, no, I, I'm not the headline. I'm a feature. Oh, but, all right. but, well, but, but I'm, fine. but I'm, but I, but I can work clean. I can work clean. Yeah. I just, because well, I've, I've had kids. Because I've had right. kids. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the big thing is, is uh, it's different than doing a club. It just is that you know, because you're not going to get more than likely, you know, lights, music, all that stuff. You know. They're probably, I don't know, some corporate gigs they drink. It depends. I don't know. Some of them, I, the one I did recently, we're talking it was two o'clock in the afternoon, you know. Yeah. Or, or whatever. Maybe it was five. I don't know. But it was, you know, daylight. And everybody's totally sober. And I even made fun of that. And, uh, but the big thing I've learned is talk to them. Yes. Talk to them. Bring your act in. Be funny. But I mean... But you know, because if you just go up and joke, 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 and it's not working, then you know. So if you kind of go up with the attitude of "I'm going to get to know these people, I'm going to have some fun with them," and you know, then I'll work some stuff in. I mean, that's what I did, and you know, it, I, I had a lot of fun with them. But I mean, I think that's the the most thing. It, it is. It's a different energy working yeah. a corporate show. I mean, it doesn't have to be dull. It doesn't have to be stiff and, you know, reserved or whatever. But, you know, we're adults. Let's have some fun. Innuendo, I think it's fine. You know, yeah. I even did the, I did, the, I even did, I even pushed the edge on this corporate gig. I even did the orgasm joke, but I didn't <laughs> do it all. Right. I just said, I fake an orgasm. And that was it. And the guy yeah. booked me. I just saw him look, and then he just started laughing. And I said, "I'm not going to do the rest of that." <laughs> you know, I told him. I said, "That's where I'm drawing the line." You know. So if I mean, you want to see it, but if you want to see it, you can find it right. on YouTube at. Or, or right, or come see me at the. Yeah, because I, I will do that. I, I right. have been, I've had to do clean things, and I and I know there's some things I have the, the dirty version and the clean version, and mm -hmm. I'll do the clean version of people to laugh. And and I may see somebody who look. I'll say I can see you're a little disappointed. I tell you what, go to my website, right, and, and click on this, and you will see the version you're looking for. You, <laughs> you dirty minded man, you, <laughs> you, know, yes. you filthy dog. You can you can see it there. I can't do it here now. I mean, yeah. there, there are there, there's the I, I, I've done corporate shows and I've had people come up and go. I could tell you were holding back. And I was going, well, I had to. And they were like, yeah, I'd love to see you at a club or, you know, whatever. Because, yeah. you know, but even the, the, even though they said that, the people that wanted it clean still enjoyed it because it wasn't, you know, filthy. So there are ways to write. It just, you got to learn. And, and um, I would say young guys, if you get a chance, and I don't mean, you know, guys that are young Age wise, I mean, guys, new comics, yeah, age. new to new to doing this. Um, don't be afraid, you know, to tag along with with somebody that you know's got a corporate gig, you know, maybe a comic that you know you kind of feel they're your mentor or something. I would even say, look, I'll come for twenty five bucks and bring you guys up. Do you want to? Because shoot, you know, there have been times when. I kind of wish I had somebody break the ice, you know. Yeah. And don't, don't even do any jokes, man. Yeah, you know, and I would tell them, look, I'll pay you twenty five bucks. Don't, don't even do any jokes. Just talk to them for a minute or two. If something comes out, that's fine. You know, if you happen to fall across one of your bits, you do it. Just so stay clean. I mean, that's how you. That's experience. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. that's one thing that you got to learn. Go up. MC and not be funny. 
or not try to be, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're just there to kind of get the energy going, get the crowd going and, 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 uh, keep the show moving. That's actually a skill. That's not yeah. easy. People think that's easy. Ryan Seacrest makes millions of dollars doing that or has made me. Is he funny? I've never seen him crack a joke hardly, but he makes a lot of damn money. And all he does is go up and keep the show going. Yeah. I mean, he'll, he'll be goofy or whatever, but you know what I mean? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Nobody's ever said Brian Seacrest is a comedian. Nobody's ever said that, but no. he can MC the hell out of a show. I mean, he didn't get on America's Got Talent or whatever because he's a slouch. Shit. Are you kidding me? It was so the pictures he had of the producer naked. No, I'm just teasing. No. Oh. <laughs> no, it helped. No, I'm not. But, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's an it, important skill. Yeah. Know? And doing and doing stuff like that, those corporate gigs, that can teach you a lot of that too. Because now you're learning to do it not at a club. You know, you're you're going outside of your but yeah, G D, please. Do more corporate. Uh, I'm, I, to be honest, my bucket list is to do a cruise ship because now that I'm retired from like the regular working force, right. I would love to do I would love to do a cruise ship, one or two or three. No, I uh, think you'd be fine. Yeah. And, and, and I also want, because I have not hit all 50 states yet. I want to do comedy in all 50 states. Okay. Have you hit all 50 I states yet? It. No, I, I, 30, 30 or so. No, I think. I, I had a friend of mine who did, did like 25 and I'm like, and I'm, and, and before that it wasn't a competition until I knew somebody who had done more than me. And I'm like, now it's a competition. Now it's right. not. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Yeah. I don't know. I, you know, I'm trying to think, I, I mean, I have done across, I've done both coasts. It's just, there's a lot of in between that I, I don't think I've done and I've done a good bit of the, this side, the east, you know, from the middle over to the east. But, uh, yeah, uh, you know, and I was out there for a while. Now it's like, I mean, I'll go anywhere, but uh, I'd rather fly, I guess, now. I mean, I drive a lot, but do the cruise. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I drive most – I drive to uh, – I've driven to every every comedy show I've ever done. So next year in July will be the first time I do a comedy show where I actually fly. And, and I'm so nervous because like when I drive, I can take, I can take anything I want in my car mm -hmm. and I'm ready, you know, like, yeah. like, and, and, and when I'm flying is like, I'm not taking my guitar with me, you know? And that's, that's my, like, if somebody says, no, oh, you're going to do an hour, we need you to do like 90. Now I can do the extra 30 on my guitar without rehearsal. You know, because they're songs, you know, yeah. I just have, I just need to introduce the song, tell them about, and then play the song. And the song is like five minutes, you know, that's it. I, you know, you do a couple songs, five minutes, you got 30 minutes there, right there. I had, but to, to not have it, to not have my crutch, my, you know, some people, their crutch is like Jim Beam in a bottle. My crutch is having my guitar in my car. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. No, I, it is. It's a challenge when you don't have your car yeah I, i've done that too i've been flown to do comedy and it's it's good and it's bad you know, like you say but yeah you get used to it. but anyway i i guess if uh people want to find me they can go to brian t and uh that's uh i i try to keep up with it but it's it's got the books the uh, it's got some videos on there. It's got some of the movie posters. And I need to update a lot of the stuff. If there's anybody out there looking to work me as an actor, they can go to Brian T. Shirley And uh, that's mostly though for direct. I mean, anybody can go look at it if they want to, but it's really for directors and casting uh, purposes. Um but if they won't check that out, they can. And I'm on Facebook, Brian T. Shirley, and then Twitter. Something happened with Instagram. Um, Nigerians. <laughs> can't live with them. Can't I got them. Hack. I got hacked. <laughs> they called me and texted me after they hacked my account saying, oh, our son uh, 
hacked your account. We we apologize. And I knew then I was like, this is a scam. No, I mean, I was blocking stuff. And I've been in touch with Instagram. They haven't done anything. And I don't know if they blocked me so bad that I can't get, that I'm not really getting to Instagram. I don't know. I just know. Um, so Instagram's out right now until I figure that out. And TikTok, I'm on TikTok. Um, and LinkedIn. So yeah. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, YouTube. Those, uh, I've got, I think, 100 videos on YouTube. Something like that. Wow. I've got a, yeah, because yeah, all the BTS on the roads. On oh, that's there. that's true. Yeah, that's a lot of videos, and uh, then you know the shorts. But check me out on Spark TV. S P A R K K K. It's two Ks. Spark TV. If you for you folks out there, especially aspiring actors and stuff, there's platforms like Spark TV, and I know you do some. Uh, independent stuff too don't you gd i i have done Are you but started it, to get into some movies and stuff yeah i've done i've done some independent stuff but i'm not it's not my forte right um but because like i said i to be honest my forte is writing i yeah I, but that's, i mean that, that's where everything starts so yeah what spark tv is is it's a platform online and it's free to watch and everything and joined and it's a lot of independent films uh independent web series uh you know who knows he might can you know he might talk with you about putting this on there i don't know i i just know that i got some shorts on there anguish is a short uh film that i wrote and directed i was not the star of it because i i didn't want to be i i wanted to get somebody else to do the lead and i uh, got this guy named ron frazier who's become a friend we were friends before i wrote it and he is john goodman's stand-in on righteous gemstones and he's uh, okay like, yeah and uh he, he's an actor and he's starting to try to get into bigger things too uh not that righteous gemstones are but he didn't have a speaking part he was one right. of the deacons. he's at the table when they uh, but he didn't get a speaking part yet um, and then, uh, the seer is a short film that I, a science fiction thing I wrote years ago that I turned into a kind of a slideshow movie, I guess you would call it. I don't know. I, I just had the idea to put it to video and, uh, they, they accepted it. And, uh, there's some other stuff, some BTS on the road. So spark TV, but then I've got some friends that have stuff on there too. So it's, it's okay. I mean, it's like. Where do you go to watch people that are trying and don't have a lot of money, you know, to put right. these things out? Well, that's one of the platforms called Spark TV. So if you like to support independent stuff like that, check it out. And, uh, you know, there, there's all kind of Roku channels out there now. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm on a few of those, too, with some of my things. IBL yeah. Network is one of them. And uh, I think you can get this on something. Um especially because you edit it and stuff. And Ron, Ron Frazier's got a podcast like this called Just Never Know. So you might want to connect with him. Okay. You guys can Ron trade Frazier. In, yeah. You guys can trade interviews or something. All right, cool. Yeah. So like I said, I'm, I'm – first of all, I I thank you for doing this for me because I know you're busy. Oh, yeah. No, I, thanks. I know busy because it took us what like four years to schedule this, and I've only been working on the show for six months. So, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've been busy, but you've got a lot of fires in the, a lot of fires in the iron. No, a lot yeah. of iron in the fire. Wait a minute, you're busy. That's it. And, yeah, and that's part of the reason I wanted to talk to you also because comedy is not just telling jokes. You know, the business of comedy is just so versatile and so wide, and you've got your hands and your feet. And a few other body parts in a lot of it, and yeah. so I'm and I'm hoping that young people can learn a little something. Again, not young people like minors, but inexperienced comedians. You know, just know that we were not always as funny and as good as we are now. We worked at it, and you need to work at it too. And then you could yes. be like us. You know, I wish I'd have known some of this stuff twenty years ago. I'm seeing young guys that have like they're cheating.
because I'm sorry, they get to watch the videos of all the masters. And when you started, there weren't videos. If you want to see somebody on TV, if you want to see a your comedian, you had to wait for them to come in town, go to their town, or right. wait for it to come on television. Right now, first. it's like yeah. someone yeah. says, like, I want to see Bill Burr. Bill Burr, okay. Watch him. You know, oh, I want to see it again. Yeah, but you know what, though? The other side of that coin, though, is I think it's made a lot of people lazy. Yes. Yeah. But the ones that are good, but the ones that are good, they have like a a plethora of material to learn from. And if they really want to learn, they don't, you know, they have like a shortcut that is just so frustrating because I didn't. Okay, I've only been doing this for nine years. You've been doing this for twenty-five years, give or take a century. I mean, twenty-five years, give or take a few. You didn't have smartphones twenty-five years ago. You know, it was a luxury to record your set. Yeah, yeah. You know. Oh yeah. No, I mean, when I started off, I could record. I'd practice and record at home. I didn't practice in front of a mirror, like you're saying. I. I would set up a camera and a tripod and I'd run through my set and then I'd look at it and I'd go, okay, I need to not walk when I do this, you know, but, the, but kids now, they just, I was watching two young guys. And I'm like, if I wasn't so confident in my, in myself, I'd be jealous of you too. You know, <laughs> I would, cause I, because it's, it's like, okay, I've had my day, you know, I've had my day. I didn't have those things. It's like it's like being jealous of your kid because your kid has the really, really good G.I. Joe's and your G.I. Joe only had nine opposable positions and their G.I. <laughs> Joe and their G.I. Joe is full articulation. You know, it's like, OK, you got a real, you got a better G.I. Joe. I, I I did the best I could with my G.I. Joe. Right. You know? When I was a kid, they had six million dollar man dolls. We didn't get that. We got the dollar ninety five man. doll. You know? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> the one dollar man, and I owe you five million nine hundred ninety nine thousand. <laughs> yeah. He didn't have a bionic leg; he had a spring leg. You know? <laughs> oh, there's a new one. Let me write that down. Anyway, so I, I gotta go. But all right, thank you for doing this for me, man. I no, appreciate it. Thank, no, thanks for having me. And as soon as you promote it, yes, I will let you know. I will. As soon as I'm looking I will, forward to seeing it. I will edit all of the June interviews, like the pretty much the last weekend of June. I oh, get good. it all together. And then I it'll hit YouTube before it hit Knob TV. But when it's ready, I'll let you know. Okay. And, Sounds good. And again, I appreciate it. I really do. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me, man. All right, man. Take care. Talk to you soon. All righty.